All right, another project. This is an interesting one. Uh, anybody that's had to put the ring gear, you know, a ring gear on a uh, uh, carrier or differential, whatever you want to call it, uh, has had to deal with, you know, pulling the bolts on, doing some of that stuff. Um, normally it's not bad. Uh, it's not normally a, a bad process. Just fool around trying to make something easier. I came across one of these. Um, let me put this ring gear down here. I'll keep it clean. Uh, induction cooktops. It was uh, a piece of thin glass. Looks like uh, you know made out of uh, standard cheap electronic type of materials. Um, and it's an induction heater. It's about sixty dollars. I got it. Uh, got it off of Amazon after watching some guy heat up some ring gears with an induction heater or something that was a bazillion dollars and uh, I go hey man we get one of those uh, off of you know Amazon, Ebay, or whatever and I thought I'd be able to put the bearings on and um, and the ring gear but after fooling around with uh, with the temperature to get it hot enough but not too hot uh, I don't think there's enough expansion to uh, put the bearings on without still pressing them so for the bearings uh, still needed to press well that's easy I just use some of the scrap pipe that I had and made a uh, little thing in that. It's always worked out well. Again, still need the press for that, but this is always a, a pain in the neck to to kind of get get on, uh, even with the press, without all the right uh, pieces of aluminum and always worry about scarring things up. So, um, if I can remember how this works, is basically set this thing up um, on... Uh, on high, let's see if I can remember how it all works. Yeah, probably 100, I don't know. I don't remember how, uh, if that's power or temperature. Let's, uh, let's put the temperature and put it to 370, 3, 340 or 370. And, uh, and hopefully that will uh, start heating up. And uh, I think I read online that you wanna keep it under 350 degrees. In, in that range and if you put your hand on it you can already feel it starting to get hot. These induction cook tops are kind of tricky. Uh, it has to have a good piece of metal on it or it won't fire up. Aluminum won't work. Uh, it may but not too well. Um, but steel works really well on this. And plus you can use it as a cooktop uh, in your garage. Um, it will uh, get hot pretty quickly. You know, I already feel the heat on the bottom getting real hot. Um, but as soon as it gets up to a certain Temperature, we're going to flip it over and uh, put the three studs in the bottom so we can align it up into, uh, this is a DPI um, differential, and it's a, uh, it's like a, a torsion diff with a preloaded clutch. Very light, super strong, you know, all that jazz. Really nice and made piece, made in USA, by the way. Um, and I got it from, I think I'm in California, so I didn't want to buy it direct from DPI. Uh, so I got it from Coleman Racing, and it was still way cheaper after, uh, after our taxes, the shipping, all that stuff is still way cheaper than me buying it in California. So, thanks California for making it attractive for me to buy, uh, uh, race car parts made in California from, uh, from the Midwest. Anyways, it's getting hot. Uh, one of the other things that's nice to use is the Fluke. Uh, infrared thermometer and um, this will give a nice uh, reading. It's kind of hard to see with the bright lights and all that, but uh, about, depending on where you put it, yeah, about 100 degrees or so. Uh, parts are getting hotter, but um, as soon as it gets up to, eh, I think we did 325 last time on uh, on the 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 core of the gear um, and it takes a, a couple of minutes but it's already getting hot to hand, to, to keep your hand on so um, let's see where we're at. About 102 right now and once it gets going it gets pretty hot I can't remember if I had to jack up the uh, the wattage to, to get the gear hot enough to do it but the other piece you'll need is uh, some welding gloves and uh, one of the things you got to be careful as you're handling the bottom of the gear and through here you don't want to get any scrap or dirt or or pieces uh, left over from your welding gloves uh, on the base of the 
uh, ring gear as it drops on because uh, you don't want any of that uh, dirt underneath there. So as this heats up, I'll ramble a little bit. So I, as I said, I got this from uh, Amazon. It was about I think $59 shipped or something like that. Uh, you can you can use it to heat bearings. Um, and what I used for that, I don't have it here, but you know. You need something a little larger than this to trigger it to to know that it's uh, uh, got some steel on it, so it'll start to conduct. You can't turn it on without metal on it. That's the the downside. So trying to use small small metal or bearings, uh, you need to have a heater plate that you dump on. They actually sell them for aluminum cookware, but I think it defeats the purpose of, uh, of the induction cooktop if you have a piece of steel with a pot on top of it. The whole idea is it's supposed to heat uh, with uh, magnetism or induction or whatever you want to call it. Um, again, it's getting real, real hot now. And uh, let's take a temperature. Let's see. About 110, 112. Um, and we'll get it up there. I think I, you can kind of tell too because it starts uh, giving off a little of the oil. This might not have any of it because um, it was a uh, strange engineering polished gear set, um, which is kind of nice and it looks nice for sure. It makes it a little harder to, to get the uh, markings on uh, when you start doing the uh, uh, gear marking compound because it's kind of hard to see. But um, it's a trade off well worth, I think. The idea also be besides just making them shiny and pretty, is it, the, the gears are kind of broken in for you already since uh, all the, the bad abrasive coatings and whatnot that are on the gears that uh, is normally shipped with them. Uh, you don't have uh, as much breaking period, so I'm told, and uh, they're ready to go. So that's another thing that's, that's kind of nice. Plus it just, you know, looks really cool, you know, so it's worth something, if, if anything. But um, I like these gears. They're made in USA um, by Strange Engineering. I think they're out of Chicago, Illinois, or something like that. But um, uh, as, uh, uh, as I said, uh, you just let it kind of heat up, and it's starting to get, uh, get plenty hot now. Let's see what we get. About 120. I think the way that I did it before was I think to put the power way up on it because the wattage uh, just made it heat up faster. And right now it's on temperature mode, but um, I don't think that really, I don't think it's really accurate. I don't know where the temperature sender is, but uh, in turning that uh, about 132, and it starts climbing to the point where um, that's just going to drop basically right on over here um, the uh, like I said you'll need gloves obviously so I'm just gonna let it hit uh, get hot I'll stop the camera for a second so you don't have to watch heat heating a ring gear all right we're back hang on uh, I didn't have the thing cranked up it goes up to 1500 watts and added a thousand um, I don't know if you can see in the the display at all with all the glare there goes a little something uh, the infrared uh, display is kind of nice. More fun than anything. Uh, you can just easily put some oil on there when it starts smoking. <laughs> That's probably, you know, light oil will probably give you a thing. Um, I'm looking at about 290. Just coming up on 300 degrees. So, um, probably take about 5 maybe at most 10 minutes depending on how much power these things have just clicked over 300 so what I'm gonna do is uh, again bang off my welding gloves make sure they're clean and it might the, the interesting thing is when I lift it off at the the um, it might just as usually go off and the, the other thing watch out most of these things the top is glass so, and you can see the, you heard the beep right there. It's now giving me an error message saying, hey buddy, um, there's uh, not enough metal on here to sustain. So now that's, that's pretty good. Let me get the other glove on. 
And let's move this a little closer so you get a little in view before it gets too cold. And basically, dropped right on. It's almost to the point where it's like, it's, uh, it doesn't seem like it's, um, it doesn't seem like it's uh, on until loose. I probably could have got a lot less, um, a lot less uh, temperature on there. But I guess it's a, you know, trial and error. But right now it's on pretty good. You're still going to torque it down and get it all tight and all that jazz. But this is easy. That's pretty much it. It pops on. Let that sucker cool for a long time, uh, or you will uh, pretty much regret picking that uh, ring gear up. And you hear the fan just turned off on that thing. So this is a handy item. I'm not sure what else to use it for, but um, you can use it to heat things up for for pressing. There's like a like you said, you need a plate at least about that big to trigger the sensor. Let's see if this this is a a uh, six by six plate. And once it goes into uh, its shutoff mode, usually you got to re restart it. And I don't think there's enough uh, uh, metal on it. Um, but you can fool around with that. I bought a plate off of eBay. It was a an eight inch round quarter inch um, piece of steel plate for about fifteen bucks shipped. And they also sell plates like that at the uh, Bed Bath and Beyond or something for folks that have the induction cooktops and want to use their old type of uh, aluminum pots or or uh, other things that aren't iron or steel based. But that's it. I mean, nothing magical here. Let things cool down. Once it cools down, it'll be locked on tight. And uh, at that point, uh, pull the studs out and then put the uh, the regular uh, ring gear bolts in and torque it down. So that's my exciting uh, evening project was to put the ring gear on the DPI differential. Have a great one. Get your projects done. And out.